Chapter six of a Tales of the Trail by Henry Inman. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter six Wall Henderson. In one of the busy little mining camps just over the range in New Mexico, there prowled around, about twenty-five years ago, a notorious character whose life was made up of desperate adventures, and whose tragic death, which is the subject of this sketch, illustrates the inevitable fate of the average border bully. Wall Henderson was born and raised, as he termed it, in Missouri he came over the mountains into the new mexico mines from colorado soon after the first discovery of gold in the merino hills where he staked off a claim in humbug gulch and commenced working in an apparently honest way he was a rough illiterate fellow possessing the physique of a giant courageous as a she grizzly with cubs and such a dead shot with his revolver that he soon became a terror to the whole mountain population he was a desperado in its fullest sense without one redeeming quality except that he was kind to his dog a wicked-looking cur fit companion for such a surly master any more intercourse with wall than was absolutely necessary was carefully avoided by every one and the idea of getting into a dispute with him who would rather shoot than eat never entered the heads of those who worked claims in the vicinity so that virtually he commanded the respect of a king one afternoon wall was seized with a desire to start off on a little prospecting tour to another portion of the range where he suspected the existence of a quartz lead he left his claim in the gulch only partially opened never dreaming for an instant that any one would have the temerity to jump it in his absence after they had discovered that he owned it which he took good care they could easily learn for before he went he asked one of his more educated neighboring miners to come over and cut his name on a dead pine stump that stood near the mouth of his pit this friend was nothing loath to oblige his surly comrade so just after dinner he came over and with his keen bowie knife he slashed out a huge wall henderson his claim on the dead stump it took him nearly two hours to complete his literary labors while wall stood by impatiently watching him and when his friend had just finished the last touch of his rude letters remarked well i guess there ain't no one going for to touch that thar then swinging his pick and shovel over his shoulder he whistled to his dog took his bearings by a look at the sun started down the canyon on a sort of shuffling trot and was soon out of sight he was gone three days when he returned he found that his ground had been jumped by a party of irish miners who had come into the diggings during his absence wall in as quiet a manner as his bulldog nature permitted told them to git but they swore they would hold the claim in spite of him and if he was as big as finn mccool they would fight him wall smothered his rage for the moment coolly walked off to his cabin where he armed himself with two revolvers a spencer carbine and a wicked-looking i x l blade and started back to the gulch determined to drive the intruders away or kill them if necessary it mattered little as to choice get out of this quick jump or i'll fill you full of holes was wall's greeting as on his return he came in sight of the intruders but one of the plucky irishmen made a break for wall intending to finish him by a well-directed blow from his shovel wall quick as thought brought down his revolver killing his man instantly the bullet hitting him in the forehead directly between the eyes a spot that was wall's invariable target which in his list of nearly a score of victims he never failed to center the two now thoroughly frightened companions of the dead miner fled to camp and told the story of the murder wall believing that he would have a crowd on his heels in a little while started hurriedly for his cabin proposing to light out for a while as he said but a mob of plucky men intercepted him he was arrested taken to camp and confined in a little log building around which a guard was placed 
as the news of wall's latest exploit spread around the hills the irish miners flocked in from all directions bent on revenge the people of the town expected a general outbreak between the irish and american elements if any resistance was offered to the infuriated friends of the murdered man in their attempt to take wall from the improvised jail which they openly proclaimed they would do as soon as night came on the building used for the incarceration of wall was an abandoned log store about sixteen feet square the interstices of the logs were chinked with mud and the whole surmounted by a brush and dirt roof in the corner of the room after the mexican fashion a huge but rude fireplace had been constructed of stone and earth from which a large chimney composed of the same material communicated with the open air through the roof above no sooner had the heavy door closed on wall than he began an accurate survey of his quarters with a view of escaping as soon as the mob he confidently expected should make their appearance one glance at the immense fireplace which yawned like the opening to a cave and a look at the clear sky above through the chimney satisfied him that he would be out of his prison and up some mountain gulch before his intended captors could think twice shortly after dark a motley crowd of rough miners half crazed with the villainous liquors they had been drinking all the afternoon assembled at the jail they at once ordered the guard away fired their pistols in the air and made the very hills ring with their curses and imprecations upon the prisoner within the little hut wall meantime had determined to escape in fact at the very time the crowd had reached the door he was on the roof quietly waiting for the mob to make a rush inside at which moment he proposed to leap to the ground from the rear of the building he waited for the signal which soon came in the shape of a volley of pistol and carbine shots and a wild yell from the would-be avengers who with a desperate rush made for the door under the pressure it flew from its fastenings and swung open with a loud report throwing half a dozen of the mob upon the dirt floor for a moment or two no one could enter as those nearest the door became wedged together while the pressure from the crowd in the rear held them more securely imprisoned than wall who at this juncture jumped from the roof and to use his own expression lit out lively when the crowd became aware that wall had escaped they threatened to lynch the guard and but for the intercession of some of the cooler-headed and less drunken members of the party no doubt their threats would have been carried into execution they divided into little bands and scoured the camp visiting every suspected house or hole where the game might possibly be secreted and it was not until early morning that the search was abandoned the following day the events of the preceding night were fully discussed and as many conjectures were suggested in relation to wall's escape and whereabouts as there were groups of men each had his own theory each knew exactly how and when he got away old sam bartlett a short thick-set grizzly veteran miner expressed it as his opinion that wall went up that thar chimbley and by this yar time is well heeled somewhere near camp surrounded by a battery of small arms ready to fight the whole outfit sam's surmises proved true no sooner had wall made his escape than he went to his own den for a moment to secure arms and ammunition then to an abandoned tunnel about a mile up the nearest gulch where he immediately commenced to fortify his position prepared to sell his life as dearly as possible if the mod pursued him as he afterward said did not intend to pass in his checks until he had made a sieve of a few of them the mexican woman with whom he lived proved a faithful ally under the shadow of the night she secretly conveyed food and blankets never revealing to a soul where her americano was always earnestly denying any knowledge of the fugitive for nearly a week wall lived in the abandoned mining tunnel at the expiration of that time when the excitement had somewhat subsided and it was generally supposed he had fled the country he quietly walked into camp at midnight broke open a stable took out a horse saddled him and galloped off to taos 
which place he reached next morning in justice to wall let it be said that he was not a professional horse thief he had not gotten so low as that but having perfect faith in the old saw that self-preservation is the first law of nature he seized upon the only reliable means to escape strangling by a mob on his arrival at taos where he felt secure he returned the animal to his owner with thanks complimenting him on his architectural skill in constructing a stable that could be entered so easily and upon the endurance of his horse that had carried him so well a little more than a month later the camp was somewhat startled one afternoon at seeing wall riding down the main street mounted on a mexican pony with four revolvers buckled around his waist and a carbine slung across his back halting in front of a saloon he alighted and with a devil-may-care sort of a nod to the loafers hanging round invited them all in to take a drink to the crowd at the bar he related his adventures since he had been among them said he was tired of taos and had come back to look after his mining interest up humbug gulch which he thought he had neglected too long he added if any gentlemen were sympathizers with the would-be stranglers he would be pleased to step out on the street and give them an exhibition of his peculiar manner of managing the portable battery he had provided himself with no one seeming particularly anxious to witness the proffered entertainment war was not declared and after a round or two of tau's lightning as whiskey was called in those days wall quietly mounted his horse and made his way toward his little dugout where he was met by his faithful signora and provided with a bountiful repast of tortillas and frijoles corn cakes and beans the excitement in camp gradually exhausted itself and it was mutually agreed that wall should not be molested if he kept away from humbug gulch wall apparently accepted the situation turned his attention to the laudable ambition of supplying the camp with cordwood and almost any day thereafter could be seen coming into town with his load one day about two months after he had settled himself down to legitimate pursuits while sitting in a saloon fatigued by a somewhat arduous morning's work a party of irish miners entered all of whom were more or less under the influence of liquor after bandying words with wall in reference to his claim and the murder of their companion one rather more bold than discreet approached wall holding a large stone and said be jabbers wall you would look better dead than alive when wall as quick as thought drew his pistol and drawing a bead on the irishman said drop that rock the stone dropped wall quietly resumed his seat without another word replaced his pistol in its holster coolly lighted his pipe and commenced to smoke the gang were evidently bent on mischief but wall could not be intimidated and made no move to leave his seat but kept his keen eye on every act of the drunken mob he listened coolly and indifferently for a while to their coarse jests and braggadocio threats cast at him but there comes a moment when patience ceases to be a virtue and comes soonest to men of such calibre as wall when another of the belligerents approached too near with an outrageous remark wall jumped to his feet and said by blank i think i'll kill one of you just for the luck and put a stop to this blankety nonsense drawing out his pistol he fired the ball as always taking effect in the bridge of his victim's nose passing through the right eye and coming out in front of the ear at the report of the pistol a crowd rushed in but no one attempted to interfere with wall who took a position against the side of the room where he invited any one who wanted him to step up but if any one did he would make a sieve of him no one desirous of being converted into that useful article just then not a soul stepped forward the alcalde footnote the spanish title of a magistrate corresponding to justice of the peace the alcalde and sheriff were sent for and soon arrived 
wall gave himself up and was remanded to his old quarters the little log jail from which he had so successfully made his escape by way of the huge chimney on a former occasion the drunken companions of the murdered miner immediately upon the arrest of wall started off to muster up a crowd of their countrymen determined this time to mete out summary vengeance upon the assassin of their comrade to preclude the possibility of an escape on the part of the prisoner an additional guard was employed to watch the outside of the jail and two men were posted on the roof no going up thar chimney this time shortly after dark another mob composed of the friends of wall's last victim poured into camp from the gulches and hills and proceeded directly to the jail determined that this time their game should not slip through their fingers in a few moments the infuriated and howling would-be lynchers forced the door of the building open in the same manner as they had done before but their bird had flown wall was not there knowing the desperate character of the men who had come to take his life wall had resolved to make a determined effort to get away from them if possible when he first heard them surging and howling in the distance and putting all his quick wits at work soon decided what might be done standing at the side of the door as it was crushed from its fastenings he allowed the crowd to tumble and rush pell-mell into the dark room while he quickly slipped past them out into the street walked slowly to the first corner then shot into the night and was free the rage and disappointment of the exasperated miners on the discovery that their man had again eluded them can better be imagined than described wall proceeded to his little home took one of his horses from the stable rode rapidly out of camp over a mountain trail and in a few hours was miles away where he found a safe retreat the disappointed crowd on discovering that for the present at least wall was beyond their power slowly retired to their homes swearing they would kill wall on sight if he ever made his appearance in camp again but a few days elapsed before wall again dropped into town though strange as it may seem no attempt was made to arrest him for weeks everything about camp moved along quietly and it was hoped that further disturbance was at an end one afternoon however while wall was standing in front of one of the little stores scattered at intervals along the long main street of the town engaged in conversation with a lot of miners who had congregated there a horseman came galloping up the principal thoroughfare halting directly in front of the door where wall and his companions were talking taking a single glance at wall he exclaimed you are the man i'm looking for and drawing his revolver commenced shooting he fired three shots in rapid succession neither of which however took effect but before he could cock his pistol again which he was in the act of doing wall had drawn a bead on him and fired the ball struck him in the trigger thumb and thereby turned or it would have found its proper centre between the eyes finding himself disabled the rider put spurs to his horse and fled to the friendly shelter of the nearest ravine but soon returned dismounted as he discovered that he had not been followed by the terrible wall a crowd gathered around to shoot the wretch who had so deliberately jeopardized the lives of innocent citizens but he called out that he was wounded for god's sake not to kill him he would give himself up quietly if he could be permitted to see a doctor the doctor happened to be sitting in front of his office near by and took him in and amputated his thumb he was then turned over to the sheriff who placed him in an unoccupied log building and appointed a guard to watch him during the night however following in the footsteps of the illustrious wall he eluded the vigilance of the guard made good his escape and ran into the mountains where he was received by friends who were determined to protect him from re-arrest the following day word was sent the doctor to come out and dress his wounds obeying the summons the doctor found him within a hundred yards of his cabin at the side of a mining ditch surrounded by an array of pistols carbines and knives determined to resist any attempt to rearrest him the point selected commanding every avenue of approach up the mountain slope here he remained several days 
he sent word to the alcalde through some of his friends that he would die before giving himself up to the stranglers but would submit if soldiers were to come for him upon this message of defiance no further effort was made to capture him and the town relapsed once more into its wonted quietude even henderson became remarkably docile no further disturbances occurring between him and the miners the trouble ending apparently by mutual consent some months subsequent to the incidents related in the foregoing the little camp was again thrown into a state of excitement in consequence of a report of the robbery of the mail in the canyon between elizabethtown and ute creek it was bruited about and proved true that when the coach which made tri-weekly trips between the camp and the cimarron to connect with the great southern overland line reached a lonely point in the canyon where the road was narrow and wound around a side hill covered with a dense growth of scrubby pines three disguised men would slip out and order the driver to halt then without moving from their place on either side of the confined pass with their rifles pointed toward him demand that the express box be thrown from the boot this modest request was always complied with after which they ordered the driver to move on much to the relief of the thoroughly frightened conductor and the two or three passengers inside five or six depredations of this character were committed in the course of a month the people in camp began to have their suspicions aroused and many were the conjectures as to who the guilty parties could be a company was formed to scour the canyon but not even a clue of the hiraman could be found nor a place that exhibited any signs of a rendezvous this fact confirmed the suspicions of the law-abiding portion of the community that there existed in their midst and neighboring settlements on ute creek an organized band of road agents who started out only on favorable opportunities for carrying on their nefarious purposes it was believed by many that persons residing in elizabethtown kept watch advised their partners in this crime at ute creek at what time a large amount of gold would probably be made and the number of passengers with their names the coach would carry wall absented himself from the camp a day or two at a time and it began to be murmured that he could tell if he would a great deal concerning these systematic robberies it was even hinted that he not only directly aided and abetted the attacks on the coach but took an active part himself he was very reticent on the subject and it was a fact commented upon by nearly every one in camp that after an absence of two or three days he would invariably turn up the very morning after a robbery with a load of wood for sale and as demurely ride through town on his little wagon as if such a thing as an attack on the coach the day before had never taken place of course no positive proof of his complicity could be obtained yet it was generally believed that he belonged to the gang the man who kept the principal saloon was well known throughout the territory not only on account of his size and weight but also in consequence of his insatiable thirst for bug juice and his dexterous manipulation of the cards and he was withal a law-abiding citizen he would tolerate nothing that was not strictly regular in the eye of the law he wouldn't steal a horse or carry off a red-hot stove but woe to the unfortunate and confiding individual who sat down to his game with the expectation of leaving with a cent in his clothes his thorough knowledge of monte faro poker and other genteel games made him as much a terror behind the green-covered table as a pack of highway robbers while he would not hesitate to fleece some unsuspecting victim in a gentlemanly game he had no sympathy with any lawbreaker or road agent who would halt a man for his money without the farcical proceeding of having a little bout of cards to win it honorably one afternoon while the robberies of the mail coach were at their height three or four broken-down gamblers sauntered into his saloon and commenced to discuss the last depredation and the modus operandi of the efficient agents prominent among the group was wall each had his theory to advance and each expressed it freely 
the barkeeper said don't you understand a favorite expression when excited don't you understand the blankety rascals don't live a great way from this camp and i wouldn't wonder if a few of them don't you understand are right inside of this shebang now don't you understand i ain't got no sympathy for any such work don't you understand and we help bring every mother's son of em don't you understand old sam bartlett expressed it as his opinion that reuben james of ute creek knowed all about it and was at the head of the gang wall put in his oar occasionally but from his remarks it was apparent that his sympathy was rather in favour of that style of robbing than stealing it through a blankety old faro box words waxed high and it was evident there was going to be a difficult as kit carson used to say the proprietor saw that trouble would ensue if the conversation was not stopped so desirous of putting an end to it he turned to wall and said wall we've had enough of this so come on and have a drink and go home wall accepted the invitation and with a closing remark that he considered the robbers were a blankety sight better than some of the genteel thieves who lived right in camp he walked up to the bar while the owner from behind said wall what will you have i'll take whiskey and mine answered wall glass and bottle were set out and while the proprietor was mixing a toddy beneath the bar for himself wall seized the bottle poured his glass full to the brim then deliberately emptied it on the counter with the remark if you don't like that why then take your change any way you want it at the same instant putting his hand on his hip as if in the act of drawing his pistol as quick as thought the proprietor knowing the desperate character of the man he had to deal with seized a pistol from behind the bar leveled it fired and wall fell dead then immediately stepping from where he was to the front pistol in hand he emptied the remaining chambers of his revolver into the prostrate body he gave himself up at once an examination was shortly held before the alcalde where all the facts were elicited and the verdict of the jury was a justifiable homicide thus ended the career of wall henderson whose bones are reposing on the little hill above the now abandoned camp where a score or more of others lie who went the same way End of chapter six